I was going through my catalogue of videos, and I realised that there is one area of use for Yamato notes that I haven't really talked about, and that is abstract art. Which, ironically, was the reason for why I wanted to learn Yamato notes in the first place. So let's change that, by going over to make this abstract glass cubes art piece. I will use the default cube as the Yamato notes object, but it doesn't really matter what you use, since all the geometry will be created in the node tree itself. So head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace, and add a new node tree. First I want to scatter some cubes in a randomized pattern. So start by adding a cube from the mesh primitives, and set the size to 2, and vertices x, y and c to 10. Add a distribute points on faces node, an instance on points node, and a random value node. Set the distribute points node to Poisson disk, the distance min value to 0.81, the density max value to 7.8, and set the seed to 1. Then connect it to the point socket of the instance on points node. Next, connect the cube itself to the instance socket. Set the min value of the random value node to 0.3 and the max value to 0 0.77 and set the seed to 2 then connect it to the scale socket of the instance on points node Now, since this setup is fully procedural you can change seeds and values at any point to get different distributions and shapes The values I use in this video are just the values that I found to work for the look that I was going for Next, let's create some dents on the faces of the cubes by doing some extrusions and scaling of those extrusions. Add two extrude mesh nodes set to faces, a scale elements node set to face, a subdivision surface node, and a set shade smooth node. The first extrude mesh node will be used to create an extra face with an offset of zero which means that the extruded face is overlaid on the original face. The scale elements node will then use the top output of the extrude mesh node as the selection, meaning that the scaling will only be applied to the top part of the extruded mesh. This essentially creates an inset that can be adjusted with the scale elements node. And I will use a scale value of 0.33 for this. And finally, the second extrude mesh node will be used to extrude the inset face inwards, by setting the offset scale to negative 0.01. Again, the top output of the first extrude mesh node can be used to limit the second extrusion to just that specific face. One thing to note here is that the size and density of these dents are dependent on the topology of the cubes, so adding a subdivision node before the extrusions for example, would create a much denser distribution. This is the reason for why I set the vertices x, y and c of the cube to 10. Lastly, connect the subdivision surface node and set the level to 2 to smoothen out the mesh and turn the square insets to circles. And connect the set shade smooth node to apply smooth shading to the mesh. Now, before moving on, let's add a glass material to the cubes. In the materials tab, create a new material and name it glass. Then add a set material node and select the glass material in the drop down. In the material, replace the principal BSDF with the glass BSDF and set the roughness to 0.1. I will use Cycles as the render engine, but before switching over to that, I want to change some settings in Eevee, since even if you're using Cycles, Eevee is still used as the material preview render engine. So in the Render Settings tab, enable Screen Space Reflections and Refraction. Also, in the Material Settings, enable Screen Space Refraction. Doing this just makes it so that the glass shader actually behaves somewhat like glass in the Material Preview mode. Next, let's create some cubes within the glass. Add a Yarn Geometry node after the Set Material node. Then add a scale instances node on a separate path from the instance on points node. And connect it to the join geometry node. Then set the scale to 0 
Being able to do things like this is one of the greatest strengths of Yamdra nodes, because any changes made to the point distribution or the random scaling will also be applied to the cubes inside the glass. Let's also add a separate material for the cubes. So add a new material in the materials tab and name it cubes. Then add a set material node after the scale instances node and select the cubes material in the dropdown. I will use a greenish yellow as the base color, but the different colors than even more complex materials with patterns might work well too depending on the look that you want to achieve. At this point, I will switch over to cycles and render view to get a more accurate representation of the materials. I would also suggest setting the max samples in the viewport sampling to something like 32 to increase performance. Looks pretty good. However, there is one issue that I want to address. And that is the fact that at this point, the glass cubes are just solid blocks of glass as far as the render engine is concerned. A much better look in my opinion would be if the glass cubes were actually hollow inside with fairly thick walls. If you prefer the solid glass block look, you can skip to this timecode. Otherwise, let's talk a bit about glass in Blender. Here I have a cube with a glass shader, and inside that cube I have a smaller cube with the standard shader. And it looks pretty much as you would expect. Now, if I go into edit mode, duplicate the glass cube, and scale it down, it creates walls within the glass. If I then also recalculate the normals of the smaller glass cube, so that the inwards pointing faces are considered to be the outside, the space between the glass cubes are now behaving like solid glass, while the inside of the smaller glass cube itself behaves like empty space, and this is the look that I am after. So let's recreate that in a node tree. Add a join geometry node before the glass set material node. Add a scale instances node. And a flip faces node and connect them like this. Then set the scale to 0 0.9. Here, we are now taking the original glass cubes and scaling them down to create walls, and we are then flipping the faces to create the empty space within the cubes. As a final stylistic touch, I want to make it so that the holes in the glass aren't created close to the edges. And to do that, we need to create a selection for the first extrude mesh node that excludes faces near the edges. To do this, we can use an edge angle node in combination with the compare node set to less than. With a B value of 0 0.3 and use that as a selection. Essentially, this makes it so that any face that has an edge with an angle of more than 0 0.3 will be excluded from the selection. And that's it for the Yamj nodes part. So let's set up the scene for rendering. Add a camera to the scene if you don't have one already. And in the output properties tab, set the resolution to 1080 by 1080. One trick I like to use when looking for a good angle is to first split the viewport with one view showing the camera view in rendered view by pressing 0 on the numpad. And the other view being used as an overview of the scene. I then reset the camera's position and rotation, rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis, and move it out on the y-axis until the entire subject fits in the camera view. Then I change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor, and rotate the camera on the z-axis until I find an interesting angle. I then adjust the rotation on the other axis by pressing R, then X, then X again, to lock the rotation to the camera's local x-axis, and rotate it until I again have an angle that I like. Once you're happy with the camera view, add a plane. Scale it up by a lot, and position it behind the subject relative to the camera. If you want a different background color than white, just add a material to the plane and change the base color. Next, let's add some lights. I will use a simple 3 point light setup for this, so start by adding an area light and move it up on the z-axis. In the light properties, set the power to 500. Set the shape to disk. 
and set the size to 8. Make sure that the transform pivot point is still set to 3D cursor. Then rotate the light on the Y axis like this. Then rotate it on the Z axis like this. Duplicate the light, rotate it on the Z axis until it's positioned on the opposite side of the cube. And change the power to 200. Lastly, duplicate the light again and reset both its location and rotation. Then move it up on the Z axis. So all that's left to do now is to render. I will set the render samples to 1000. And under light paths, I will set the total to 24. And increase both transmission and transparent to 24 as well. And leave the rest as it is. And that's about it. I hope this gave you a small insight into how powerful geometry nodes can be as a tool for creating abstract art. And that you learned something new. See you next time.